Hello, welcome everyone to another video for the Kotlin Coroutine playlist, which is about RAM blocking. And what we did in the previous videos was launching coroutines that give us that coroutine behavior, which is not blocking our main UI or our main thread, I mean, in which we update our UI. But how if you want to call a suspend function inside our uh, main thread? So let's say delay like this, and then we want to block for, we want to wait for three sec or four seconds, but without uh, that's cruising behavior which is not blocking our UI. So how do we do that? By using a function called run blocking. So run blocking like this and then put this delay inside it. So what this happens is that just the name this will actually block our uh, main thread or our UI updates. So if we print something here, let's say log dot d and then tag coroutines and then you just say on create starts, for example. And then you just copy this. Print it here as well on create ends. And then another one here for run blocking starts and then run blocking ends like this. So uh, what will happen is that this will actually block our on create function. So let's check our logs and run the app. As you can see, on create starts, run blocking starts, and then after three seconds, run blocking ends, and on create ends. Uh, four seconds, I mean. So we blocked our uh, UI. Uh, for that, we use this function mainly for testing uh, and for experimenting how our coroutines work. So we, usually we, we don't want to use this in our production, but actually it's really good for testing and experimenting. Uh, how our coroutines works as I said and of course here we can call any suspend function uh, because delay is a suspend, a suspend function and if we create our own one so private suspend fun it's a sum function anything and then we try calling it here we can actually so sun I don't know what sun is but yes but if we want to call it here we can't because the suspend function and it needs a coroutine scope to be launched in which is exactly what this run blocking function gives us a coroutine scope but as I said, without that cruising behavior of not blocking our main thread. And the other thing is that we can actually have uh, coroutines. We can launch coroutines inside this ROM blocking by using, say, for example, global scope dot launch and then let's say dispatchers dot IO or main. Let's use IO. And uh, we can just get a cruising scope that does not now block our sequence. Of tasks that we have and we can of course just launch it by saying launch because we are already here in our coroutine scope then we can just launch it directly right here so if we want now to see that this does not block our UI so let's say run blocking 2 for example here and 2 as well and then here let's just say IO starts and IO ends and what will happen is that this one won't actually wait for this one to finish it will just uh, Execute. This will just execute without waiting for that one. Oops. And to see that, let's run the app and let's, for example, increase this one for more seconds, like six, and get to see our logs. So, or create starts, run blocking starts, and then after four seconds, run blocking and and then the order run blocking starts, which is the second one, without actually, as I said, waiting for this one. And then this one starts, which is the I.O. one, after six seconds it ends. And then right here, this other one ended actually before our I.O. one because it only took four seconds. And then our on create ends, so as you can see. So we can launch coroutines inside our run blocking function. And of course, this entire block will block our sequence of UI, even if we have uh, coroutines inside it. This doesn't mean these will just execute uh, without blocking our on create function because they will block it because they are inside this ROM blocking block. And of course, if we let's just uh, reduce the number of logs that we have because they are disturbing like this. And if we have now a second coroutine like this, these will of course execute deep independently because they have that coroutine behavior. So if we say IO2 like this and just let's decrease this to four seconds. 
as well as 24 seconds so these actually won't add up and they will execute independently but of course this one won't have to wait for them because this will these will execute at the same time and this one as well so let's run the app and see how that works so on create starts and then run blocking ends then immediately this one started which is run blocking too as you can see it didn't have to wait for these two and at the same time these two as well ended so this one didn't start but let's say it did end and then after all of that our own create function ended so as i said these don't add up but they actually execute at the same time and they don't wait for each other uh, but this entire run blocking will actually block our main thread so this is it for this video and the next video we'll check out jobs because uh, let's just see if we have a life cycle say life cycle scope dot launch like this and if we say var job is equal we'll see that this job is of type job so we'll see this job and why we use it and why we need it for cancellation and uh, waiting so see you in the next video and bye